Kirby's Adventure sees the pink ball making his debut appearance on home consoles. Being released in 1993 the game was a technical marvel, keep in mind the Super Nintendo Entertainment System was released two years prior yet Kirby's Adventure was released on a previous generation of hardware. The game was really great and was able to achieve a lot more than showing the system's technical capabilities. It also used this to make a good game. That's more important honestly. Excuse me you do realise this is my show don't you? After everything that's happened recently it would be really nice to get back to the original series you know. Oh great, you have your own frames now too. I mean, it's nice to bring something new to an old formula eh? Hey? It's kinda like how Kirby's Adventure kept the NES alive. Most consumers would have moved to the Super Nintendo by the time this game released. Likewise it's a surprise there's any hope to salvage this channel. That was so unnecessarily savage, I just wanted to try something new. I'm better than you are, so I'll do the review. We start our adventure with placing the pink blob in Vegetable Valley which gives us a pretty nice variety of entry levels showcasing grassy plains and dimmer woods with a simple variety of powers to slowly introduce the player to the game. Each world is visually unique, hosting their own themes and sub areas which creates a pretty damn believable world despite existing in such a time canvas. Hosting each set of levels is a map world which allows for easy access to each level in addition to mini games and a transport system. Now let's take a look at Super Mario Bros. 3's map to see how it differs. It's very linear, offers a small amount of extra content and denies access to previous levels. Meanwhile Kirby's Adventure is letting you backtrack between levels and even different worlds at your own will. Speaking of movement in this game it is outstanding, Kirby is naturally able to walk, run and jump like another platformer. This feels somewhat floaty however natural to control and is complemented well by the design of levels and Kirby himself. Kirby is primarily known for his floating and ability to consume souls. It's even the front cover of the game. That's impossible to do in the game! So I was playing Kirby's Adventure earlier, and you know what came to my attention? So, so where's the box art for the game? You've got Kirby floating and inhaling, but guess what? You can't do that in the actual game. And while those are important abilities which define Kirby, his basic movement is incredibly valuable and admittedly unless entirely mandatory, I never actually actually use the float ability as the jump is much faster and allows faster access to defensive capabilities, which of course, are taken from consuming enemies. The majority of enemies will offer some form of ability however unlike future installments of the series each ability only offers one attack. These abilities can open a multitude of ways to play the game and by using specific abilities the player is able to interact with the world to get bonus items such as health and additional lives however when it comes to the natural stages using Kirby's standard abilities generally feel easier to use to progress. Personally I'd prefer to inhale and exhale the blocks but it doesn't work very well against bosses and mini bosses you feel me. After most boss attacks a star will appear momentarily which can be used as projectiles against the bosses. Having a copy ability allows for the player to consistently attack with power as without a copy ability. You're going to die a lot. Alright, moving on, and now we have that out of the way, let's look at the progression of the story. So you start in Vegetable Valley, which is essentially a generic grass world, ending with a boss against Wispy Woods in the midst of a forest. After this, you'll move on to Ice Cream Islands. This is a mix of your typical beach worlds with a bit of desert and caves, you know. And once you've fought through this world, you'll be up against Paint Roller, who, who attacks by drawing, which is a very good design. Also, you can in the drawings and, and damage the boss by spitting them back. It, it, you could also get abilities from it. Oh, this boss isn't very smart actually. Moving forward is butter building, a massive vertical stretch across one building split across numerous levels. While moving upward you'll be in and out of the tower seeing various sights of walls and sky. This area also hosts this technically impressive rotating sprite which is just a treat to look at. Once you reach the top you get to fight against Mr. Shine and Mr. Bright which work as a duo, visually the battle is pretty unique as the sky changes to reflect the actions of the fight. Next up is Great Garden. This world hosts a grand castle in addition to an armada of an air fleet and jumping between clouds, the world ends fighting Cracker who disposes high jump enemies at you. 
Finding a physical cloud is a pretty nice way to end off this world before making our way to Yogurt Yard. A mostly mountainous world ending with another tropical resort before fighting the boss of the world. Admittedly I don't know what this thing is but it's utter hell to chase down and defeat. Ah, uh, but once it is down however, we'll move on to Orange Ocean, which boasts an actually stunning landscape. It's got oceans and caves and boats and sunsets. And to top it off you get the fight Meta Knight. Meta Knight demands you pick up the sword ability and fight him with it. The main key to this fight is being patient to avoid a loss. With the limited moves available the boss is designed to allow for a fair chance of being defeat. Once all health is depleted Meta Knight's mask will break and reveal his face before a cunning flea. With his escape, Kirby ventures forth to the final world of the game, Rainbow Resort. This world boasts the hardest challenge in the game, adding new elements and even a mini boss rush. Each level has a stunning night sky up until the final level, which sees the player in Kirby's Dreamland. We get to see Kirby in his original adventure, playing through a summary of that entire game condensed into this one level. It is really charming to see this world in pure black and white while Kirby is radiating color from the future. And keep in mind this was less than a year after the original Kirby's Dreamland came out. Although while lost in all this charm you may forget that upon completion of the level, one final challenge lies ahead of us. The final level is unlocked, the Fountain of Dreams. Taking this door drops Kirby from the sky as he falls onto the final battlefield against King DDD. This battle is rather fast paced compared to previous battles, DDD moves quickly and the projectile stars he leaves don't last very long. Additionally his health bar allows him to tank more damage than previous bosses. It's honestly really nice to see the self-proclaimed king battle like this with his hammer and jump, as well as his ability to float which feels he's purposely mimicking Kirby, forcing the player to be on equal grounds with such a brute force, but alas the player is able to defeat D to the 3 which gives us the final cutscene of the game. Having taken back the star rod from the king, Kirby proceeds to place the Star Rod within the Fountain of Dreams. However unknowingly, restoring the Star Rod causes Nightmare to form, which wouldn't have been an issue if we could trust our government officials. In a panic Big D decides to hurl Kirby and the Star Rod towards the mysterious orb as an urgent attempt to defeat it. This fight is relatively simple however if the boss cannot be defeated within a set amount of time Kirby is crushed against the ground. Once the first phase of Nightmare has been defeated the true final boss of the game shows itself. Nightmare is only vulnerable during the times he shows this tornado spot beneath his body in which Kirby must hit it with the Star Rod. This boss moves pretty quickly and demands the player is always aware of their actions. One screw up and you'll easily find yourself taking damage. If Kirby is able to endure battle for long enough you'll find yourself defeating Nightmare in an extremely satisfying ending. And this concludes Kirby's adventure. The game is a pure blast of joy from start to end. And whilst some mechanics may feel dated compared to newer installments it is impossible to deny this game is fun. Fun which deserves to live on and be replayed today. Well bloops, it was fun having you on today. Alright thanks for having me as a guest on my own show. You literally make this entire thing yourself you could kill me off but no I'm the only reason people still come to your channel. Oh. I know, but in reality, it was, it was great to be on. Uh, I'd like to try doing more speaking roles myself. You know, Kirby's Adventure is my favourite NES game. The fact it's so technically advanced for the NES, it, it really shows in just how fun it is, and because of that, it, it just... It's really used to the, the, the advantage of making the game good, you feel me? I don't know where this is going. This game is great. It would only make sense if I was in the video, right? You do realize nobody actually likes you, right? Mate, you sent me a message first year, come down to Smethwick and the